going to look at how to name a class of compounds called the ketones. Um, first of all, what makes something a ketone? Well, it must contain a carbonyl functional group. And more specifically, that carbonyl functional group, or carbon double bonded to an oxygen, must appear in the middle of a carbon chain. That's slightly different to an aldehyde, where my carbonyl functional group is at the end of a chain. So what do we need to know about naming ketones? Well, the suffix or the end part of the name is going to be a known. And for reference, let's include our little table of stem names, which relates to the number of carbons in my main chain. Let's have a look at some examples then. Here's the first one. I can see my carbonyl functional group and notice that it is between at least one carbon on each side. Therefore, it's definitely going to be a ketone. Uh, so let's then count the number of carbons in my main chain. I've got one, two, three. That relates to the stem name prop. So if I write down the stem part of my name and then write the suffix on at the end, we've got propanone. And why do I not need to put propan 2 on? Why don't, why don't I need a number to indicate where that carbonyl functional group is? Well, there's actually only one position where that carbonyl could be to make it a ketone, and that's on my middle carbon, or the second carbon. So you could put propan 2 on, but actually technically we don't need that number. Second example, here we go. Again, I've got my carbonyl functional group in the middle of a carbon chain, so it's definitely a ketone. How many carbons have I got in that chain? I've got one, two, three, four. That relates to the stem part of the name as bute. So I can write but and then anone. We call this compound butanone. Again, why don't I give that a number? Why don't I say butan 2 own? Well, if I take the only other possibility of that uh, molecule, but move the position of my carbonyl functional group like this, if I count my carbons again, yeah, I've definitely got four carbons. But as in the first or the previous uh, example, if I number my carbons here, I would have to number them from the right side to make sure my functional group is on the lowest number carbon. So in that case, it is on carbon number two. And if I compare that to the previous example, where I would have to number my carbons from the left side, one, two, three, four, again, actually, it's on my second carbon. So because those two structures are effectively identical, we don't need to put a number, we don't need to write butan 2 on. it's the only place that that carbonyl group can actually be. Let's look at a fourth example then. Here we go, slightly more complicated looking one. Uh, I've definitely got my functional group, my carbonyl functional group on the middle of a chain, it's definitely a ketone. What's the longest chain of carbons I can find? Well, I can do one, two, three, four, five, six. In this case, six relates to the stem name of hex. So let's write down hex. Now, in this case, actually, my carbonyl functional group could be, well, could be where it is. It could be on the carbon next to it. it could also be the other side. So there's a few different possibilities of where that carbonyl functional group could be positioned. So in this example, I'm going to have to be a bit more specific. I'm going to number my carbons to put that carbonyl functional group as close to carbon number one as possible. To do that, I'm going to have to label them from right to left. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's on the third carbon, so it's going to be hex and three ohm. Note that the number there goes just before the ohm bit, which is telling me it's about um, a ketone. And what's the other interesting factor here? Well, I've also got a methyl group sticking off my fourth carbon. So to add that to my name, it's going to be 4 methyl hexan 3 ohm. Slightly more complicated one there. Final example then. Oh, here we go. This is interesting. Why is it interesting? Well, I've actually got a carbonyl functional group there and one there. So I've got two of them in my molecule. How am I going to name this then? Well, let's look at the number of carbons first. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 relates to the stem name pent. So in this case, I'm going to put pent, and I need to think a little bit carefully. Uh, let's number my carbons. Does it matter which way I do it? Well, if I go one, two, three, four, five, then my carbonyl groups are on the second and fourth carbon. Let's just check the other way around. One, two, 
three, four, five. Uh, actually, that would also be the second and fourth carbon. So it doesn't matter which way I number my carbons. This is going to be pentan, two, four, di, o. And remember that di is there to tell me that there's actually two of that functional group. Where do I find those? Well, we then give the numbers where those groups are actually found. And I think that's probably about it for ketones. Hopefully this video is of some help.